I would like to talk to you on the topic it's a wild life it's a wild life how many of you gone to uh, probably a, a wildlife sanctuary the animals are roaming around and you are in a caged vehicle and this morning I believe the word that God has for our lives is going to break some chains is going to break some cages and is going to bring you out so that you can also enjoy what God has actually intended for you and for your life. Sometimes a sickness, sometimes a, a lost one, sometimes some relationships, sometimes, you know, some, some financial crisis, certain wilderness God takes us through in order for us to know that even in the midst of a wilderness, there is a God who can change our wilderness into beauty and glory. What is the cloud? It's God. The cloud was His presence. The cloud represented that God is with them in the wilderness. In, in chapter 10, we read that God's presence was with the people. The cloud settled among the camp and God is in the wilderness. But you see the nature and the psychology of the people is that they are like a nagging child. They are complaining about the things that they don't have or complaining out of fear. This morning, you know, I want us to learn from, from this passage that God is with us in the midst of a wilderness. And the second thing is, we should not complain during our wilderness. If we can consciously turn our complaints into praises, we can start seeing the presence of God moving in the midst of your situation. If you believe God is your healer, God is your savior, God is your provider, as much as we sing it, Let's live it. I am still waiting for my healing, but he is not waiting to become a healer. He is already a healer. They're going, looking at the Israelites' experience and saying, you provided for them, provide for us. That God knows your need and also God knows your wants. Not everything you want is your need. And he looks down at us and he knows he has the best in his hand. All we need to say is, Daddy, just help me out. I look to you. I love you. Not for my healing. Not for my deliverance. Not for my blessing. I just love you because you are my father. And the last thing I would like to share is, look for blessing beyond your wilderness. But God says, hey, Yes, I'm leading you through it, but I'm going to help you to, you know, earn the promise that you have by the victories that God gives for us. Do you understand this? We need to do our part. When we do our part, we meet God where we're supposed to meet Him. I'm going to say that one more time. Your wilderness is your root to your blessing so don't skip your wilderness don't skip the pain don't skip your tough times because you are on track where God wants to take you but what we need is we need to change our perspective we need to change our focus don't focus on the pain but focus on the bigger picture one two three go let us fix our eyes on Jesus the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. If Jesus can give up his ego and his shame to come and die on the cross almost naked for you and me and go through the pain, then who are we to question God in the midst of our pain? Amen. We need to realize that we need to fix our focus on Jesus. 